Welcome to our online service. A warm welcome to those who may be joining us for the first time. And we hope this gives a flavour of who we are in St Peter's and do encourage others to join us online. Wherever you are, we hope that our time together will help you feel the joy and peace that comes from worshipping together. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of Christ. We sing our opening hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. And then Debbie Coyne and Dave Johnson will read our lessons. And after Simon has preached, Paul McHenry will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Chapter 10, Amen. beginning at verse 5. Salvation is for all. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is to bring, bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? 
And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The story of Jesus calming the waters and walking on them is familiar to us. A story of Jesus calming a storm occurs in all four of the Gospels, and Jesus walks on the water in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and John. It's almost as if the story is too familiar to us. Like a story told within a family, its meaning has become less important than its telling. Walking on water is just one of those things which Jesus does. After all, he rose from the dead, so walking on water isn't that surprising at all, really, is it? Our familiarity with the story robs it, to a certain degree, of its truth and power. The disciples who knew Jesus personally see him walking on water, coming towards their boat. So unfamiliar a sight was this to them that they mistake Jesus, whom they knew well, or a ghostly apparition. Of course, Jesus' mastery of the elements is a miraculous sign of his power. Karl Barth suggests that this is not just a miracle for the disciples in the boat. The story has a much wider application. It applies to the church throughout the ages. The 5th century bishop, Peter Chrysologus, suggests that the boat in the story is meant to represent the church. We are used, of course, to this sort of maritime imagery being applied to the church and our church buildings. The main body of the church is called the nave, supposedly because the roof of a traditional church building looks like an upturned boat. But this understanding of the relationship between church and boat works in both directions. Just like the boat, the church is not intended to be a destination in itself. It is the means by which we are conveyed to the destination, the kingdom of God. It is also the means by which the gospel is carried. Like a boat, the church is not perfect or infallible. It may spring the odd leak, go off course, and occasionally risk sinking altogether. In other words, it is prone to error, doubt, and disbelief, like any other human institution. St. Augustine writes, the boat carrying the disciples, that is, the church, is rocking and shaking amid the storms of temptation while the adverse wind rages on. It is Christ coming towards the boat, towards Peter, who, despite his best efforts, cannot sustain himself, Christ who reaches out to the boat and draws it to himself. Like us, For Peter, faith alone is not sufficient. 
God's grace in the form of Christ's outstretched hand is what saves him from the water. Jesus says to the fearful disciples who are encountering him in a new and unusual, even frightening way, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter's own words take the form of something like a prayer. Lord, save me. Peter, who would deny Christ three times, is taken by the hand. Christ holds his hand and says, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And the apostles see the truth. There was no ghost, but there was always Christ. And they exclaim, prefiguring the words of the centurion standing at Christ's crucifixion, Truly, you are the Son of God. Sometimes we, the church, are too eager to limit our acceptance of other people's experience of God. We make it difficult not only for others, but also for ourselves to recognise Christ's presence among us in the church, and, as in the story, beyond what we perceive to be the church. We become obsessed about questions such as whether the expression of our worship is fresh enough, or whether our worship is liturgical enough to be truly Catholic, or whether our worship is too liturgical to be truly inclusive. Important in their own way, as these questions might seem, they're not really questions about the church, and they're certainly not questions about the kingdom of God. To stretch the boating analogy a little further, rather than arguing about what colour we should paint the boat, we should ensure that the boat is seaworthy and has enough room for any people we we might find in the waters along the way. Ultimately, we need to ensure that we are following our compass, Christ. Peter is scared that he has seen a ghost, but what he has actually seen is the strengthening and comforting presence of Christ coming towards the boat and drawing the boat towards him. Even when we're facing in the wrong direction, Christ is trying to orientate us towards him, not like a siren voice luring us into danger to be dashed on the rocks, nor like a lighthouse warning us away from danger so that we don't crash into the rocks ahead, but rather like the well-known and comforting familiar voice of a parent calling us home. Christ is no ghost, but rather the living, vital heart of our lives, God with us, in our church and beyond. Christ is in our boat, but the boat cannot contain him because he is the destination and the route. He is the island to which we are sailing and the water on which we sail. Peter sees Christ outside the boat because the boat cannot contain him. Christ fills the church, but the church can neither fully contain nor constrain him. As Christians, part of our duty is to identify Christ and those Christ-like virtues which lie not only inside our church, but also in the rest of our lives, in the mundane and the workaday, in the secular, and even in those sinful, squalid, dark places where we hide and feel fear. Even on the tempestuous sea of temptation, which rocks us and shakes our faith, Christ's hand is there to draw us towards him. We live in troubling and difficult times, but all people through history have tended to live in troubling and difficult times. These are difficult times for the church and for those who believe, but the times are at least as difficult for those who have no faith and who sit outside the church. We need to remember that it wasn't Peter's faith alone which saved him. It was his willingness to grasp the already outstretched hand of God, a hand which he perceived to be outside the familiar, outside his boat, outside the church. The glory and splendour of Christ's resurrection victory over death fills the whole world and overspills from the church. Let us not contain nor constrain Christ within our own private tabernacles, holding him like an inanimate corpse within a tomb. He is no ghost. 
let us recognise his cosmic power and presence, his life. Let us grasp the hand of the eternal, familiar and unfamiliar Christ and proclaim that Christ in the world. In the words of John Mason's hymn, How great a being, Lord, is thine, which doth all beings keep. Thy knowledge is the only line to sound so vast a deep. Thou art a sea without a shore, a sun without a sphere. Thy time is now and evermore. Thy place is everywhere. Amen. God is faithful to us through all the storms of life, yet our faith in God is so very small. Trusting in our faithful God, let us pray. Faithful God, we pray for the gift of deeper faith in you, so that we trust you in a way that alters our dependence on everything else and allows us clearer vision as to the direction and role of the church. Remind us that it is your church and not ours, your work, your power and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we call to mind the stormy areas of our world, the raging and in the insecurity, the confusion and the bewilderment, the restlessness and fear. Let your calming and reassuring presence be sensed and recognised, bringing peace and goodness, righteousness and hope. And we pray for the residents of St George's Road, the Copse, Coppice Lees, and Barkfield Avenue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Faithful God, come to us in the storms of life when we let one another down. Mishandle opportunities and come to the end of our strength and patience. And bless us with the love that never lets us down. We pray for the sick, especially Graham, Maureen, Barbara, Eileen, Nikki, and all those in hospital, and our parishioners who are housebound or live in nursing homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we place into your loving keeping all those who have died, knowing their dependence on you and your limitless mercy. We thank you for them and their gifts to the world and ask that we may, in our turn, come to you across the waters of death and live in your company forever. We pray for the recently departed, Jane Millis, John Williams, and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, whose promises stand sure forever, we thank you for your patience with us and your refusal to give up on us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel, peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of all creation, you bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. By your Holy Spirit, this bread and wine will be for us the body and blood of Christ. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. And in the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, and with the angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power, power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord. You embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, to whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms for us on the cross. And the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Father, we plead with confidence. His sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. 
We remember his dying and rising in glory. and We rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple of your glory. Bring us at the last with St. Peter and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, who with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Amen. Wherever you may be, let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory, glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we, Though are, we are many, many we, we are, are one body, because, because we, we all share in the one bread. bread. the body of Christ, given for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you've taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we bring life and hope to others, and we whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the boldness of the Spirit transform you. May the gentleness of the Spirit lead you. And may the gifts of the Spirit equip you to serve and worship God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you care for this day and always. Amen. Amen.